This is Quest for Perfection, Episode 5. I know you guys have been waiting for it because I've been wanting to do it. And basically this time we're going to be looking at a reg tweak called Core Parking. And basically, you know, I'll show you at the end if you want to um, disable Core Parking, I'll show you how to do it with a simple reg tweak. And before I get on with my results, I will say that this uh, reg edit tweak may make a difference on AMD platforms, it may make a difference on Sandy Bridge or pre-Sandy Bridge platforms as well. Um, and I'm going to say, let's get under the results anyway, that first of all, on Haswell, it did not make a difference at all. So we did Battlefield 4, and I, I held off on making this video because I wanted to test Battlefield 4, which is an 8-threaded game, and I wanted to test it on a 4770, which I was able to do at work. And now Battlefield 4... Basically, as you guys can see here, I disabled core parking in the reg edit tweak. Uh, there's two values you have to enable or disable, and I'll show you at the end anyway. Battlefield 4 showed no difference at all. So looking at the results here, they're virtually identical. There was no real um, big discrepancies between either results. So I tested it three times, 25 second benchmarks, exact same settings on the game, uh, ultra with two speed MSAA on a GDX 670 and the results were just they just were you know basically the same um, there was no real difference here so this was the first one was Battlefield 4 on a 4770 and it just yeah just really there wasn't nothing to write home about I didn't the FPS were the same I was getting 102 uh, with core parking disabled and then I was getting 103 with core parking on so it just didn't make a difference for Battlefield 4 as you guys can see here what I'm doing is frame latency testing so I'm testing the actual every individual frame and I'm testing the uh, marking the differences here and just seeing if there's a difference and there was not a difference really there's nothing to write home about here both with it disabled and with it on provided a really smooth experience uh, moving on now to Skyrim uh, this was done on my 4670K because I'd already done these results before I was going to make this video, but then with Battlefield 4 coming out, I thought, hmm, I'll wait and test it on that. So this was my 4670K at 4.6 gigs, uh, again with a GDX 670, and core parking disabled with the reg tweak enabled. This showed these results. Um, it's important to note with this game, it also showed uh, 157 average FPS with core parking disabled versus... With it on, it showed 161. So it was uh, with just the default, leaving the reg edit tweak alone. Uh, you got a slight bit more FPS there. And in my opinion, the results were pretty same when it came down to the frame latencies. There was no big discrepancies between either. Uh, you know, as you guys can see here, these frame latency results are really, really, really good. Uh, this is done on 120 hertz monitor, obviously. Um, the frame rate was, you know, no V-Sync was on, so there was no max, you know, max frame rate got up to almost 200, I think. So, 188 to be precise, but um, this, yeah, it just shows no difference. There's no real big difference here. This is just both played like butter. So, uh, moving on now to the last one, which is Heroes of New Earth, which is a multiplayer game. And, you know, obviously these two tests aren't the same because, you know, Heroes of New Earth has got different variables. So this is going to be a game with different variables in it and the tests aren't going to be identical. But again, you can see no big differences here. Like there's nothing to write home about, um, you know, both, I guess, core parking with the reg edit tweak enabled scored the worst frame. Um, you know, but there's nothing to write home about. The average frame rates were actually pretty similar. Um, again, so there was just no difference. Uh, so this is on Haswell. I'm going to you know, with me doing my research and me you know, enabling this tweak and then disabling this tweak, I didn't notice much of a difference. Now, however, it is important to know that people on the 8 core AMD FX 8350s and 8320s have noted a difference. I would love to get my hands on an FX 8350 and specifically test this core parking tweak and test it with frame latency tests. I would love to do that, but I don't have the money to get a FX8350 rig at the moment. So um, I do, but, you know, I'm not going to, I don't know. Maybe if you guys really want to see it, I might, maybe after Christmas, I might get an FX8350 and, a, you know, 990FX motherboard and maybe do a heap of guides for you guys, a heap of testing against, you know, a lot of people are requesting me to test the 4670K versus the FX8350 as well. So anyway, the bottom line is, is that it makes no difference on Haswell. And I'm guessing on Ivy Bridge as well, because when I did the frame latency testing for Skyrim, I had uh, core parking on 
uh, the default. I didn't touch that reg tweak on my um, Ivory Bridge as well, and I got a pretty much a similar curve to this one. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say it doesn't make a difference for Ivory Bridge as well. So it may make a difference for Sandy Bridge and pre-Sandy Bridge platforms on the Intel side. I'm just not sure. Now to enable this tweak, let's have a look. We go here, we go to type in reg edit, and you just open it. Now you can always change this value back. As you can see here, as I opened up RegEdit, it's already there, but I'm going to show you what to do from the start. Okay, So you want to go over to here, and you want to click on Computer. And then you want to go to Edit, and you want to click on Find. And then you want to type in here C1DF slash 4637, I believe. <laughs> I've typed it in that much that I remember. And it should actually find it. Uh, it should be the first thing it finds. I think I got that right. Um, yeah, that's the one. So you type it in. This this first one, it's found like a you know last key that it's find that makes a reg edit for its own search. I think so. Uh, just keep searching until you find one that pops up with max value. And this is the one here. You want to double click on this, and you want to change it to zero, and then you want to click OK, and then you want to click Edit Find, and you just want to keep finding it and value max change it to zero click OK and that'll disable core parking that's if you guys want to disable it now the good thing about this is you can always change it back uh, by just doing the exact reverse typing in 64 and then hitting enter so keep that in mind don't click 100 put in 64 so that's the main thing to remember don't put in 100 if you're going to change it back put in 64 and then press OK uh, now you just click that you click close it and then you restart your computer I'm not going to restart it because I'm recording for you guys and then core parking will be will be disabled and you can always enable it in the future. So anyway, that's that guys. Um lastly, I will say, yeah, if you guys like this quest for perfection, please give it a thumbs up. I'm going to be testing uh high precision event timers, going to be t um testing interrupt moderation for NICs. So next quest for perfection is going to be pretty in depth. I'm going to be testing another one as well. I forgot what it was. Um, throttling, that's right. Uh, throttling reg edit, uh, reg edit hack as well. So I'm be testing three three of those and seeing if they make a difference as well. But in the meantime, I'm going to go out limp and say that core parking really doesn't make much of a difference. Sorry. Also, before I go, I will say power consumption as well. Um, on my Haswell at home, I did some testing with a kilowatt here, and with core parking disabled, so that's with the reg edit uh, tweak applied. Uh, on idling on the desktop, it, it was around 98 watts, and during Heroes of New Earth, it was uh, running around about 220 watts. Um, with the reg edit tweak enable or default without it touched at all, it was idling around 98 watts again, and in games around 220 watts again. So there was virtually no difference between it being disabled and with it enabled. Again, I'd love to see how it stacks on an AMD FX8350. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe to Tech Yes City because I'll be giving away Tron shirts in the future. Uh, this isn't actually an official Tron shirt. I just bought like this nice, it's a really comfortable shirt. I bought it from the um, uh, big soup, like big sort of shopping mall thing placed down the road. Uh, and it's really good. It's like one of those posture shirts, and it actually supports your back and makes you sit up straight. So uh, really good for your health anyway. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will catch you soon. If you have any questions as well, please send me a PM, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. The YouTube comments section is still pretty damn bad. Uh, it's not to do with the actual the layout I'm getting used to. It's the fact that I can't post replies. It just doesn't even let me. It says you're not allowed to post a reply to this comment. And I'm like, what the hell? It's my own video. But anyway, I don't know what's going on there. I'll probably make a rant on it later for you guys. If it's not fixed, I'm giving them some time to fix their mess up. But anyway, I will catch you guys soon with another video on Battlefield 4 and RAM speeds. And I hope to see you guys soon. Peace out for now. Run easy. Bye.